Welcome back to the Rydell Law Firm Odyssey and Library channel. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we have a, another topic here I wanted to chat about. This is something that I'm probably going to do like a, a little mini course for clients because it, it's something that we always talk about and it will it would probably be very beneficial for uh, clients to have it um, you know have it on on demand right so we're gonna work on that and uh, if you're a client of, of right a law firm ask me about it if, if you don't see it yet but um, otherwise maybe check out our channel I'll probably put a teaser up maybe a link to some some, some mini course or something that non-clients or do-it-yourselfers can check out so anyways this topic is about uh, how to negotiate with your franchisor this is going to be a, a real high uh, you know 30,000 foot overview so we're not going to get into the nitty-gritty but I'm going to give you my process for how I counsel clients on negotiating with franchisors I, I don't know if it's very typical in the industry but I found that it is successful for myself and for my clients so that's what I, we're going to share with you today and um, yeah, I encourage you to, to reach out if, if you are in the process of reading your franchise agreement and you want a little bit of extra expertise um, or understanding of your legal obligations, or maybe you have some risks that you want to figure out how to mitigate. That's what I do. I do it every day. So reach out. Love to help you out. Um, so let's jump into it. How to negotiate with your franchisor. So assuming you've read the franchise agreement, you understand it uh, by and large, and you have identified certain areas of concern. Um, these can be, I mean, anything really, timelines, these can be monetary fees or something that you're, you see that you're not comfortable with or you have concerns about. You've identified something of concern, and that's the first step, is identifying the concern, and when you, when you approach the franchisor, you need to be knowledgeable about that concern. You need to explain why you're concerned about it, how it affects you, right, what the effect is to you, what that concern is. What is it? What it is there in the the franchise agreement specifically, like down to the section number? You need to know right down to the citation. This right here concerns me. You point it out to them, and here is why it concerns me. Um, for example, if this is a personal guarantee, right? Maybe you have additional businesses, or you have rent homes, or something. And you say, look, the personal guarantee requires me to um, personally, you know, guarantee everything the franchise unit is doing. But I have these other business concerns and I have these other assets that are not related and are in a totally different business and they should not be a risk. <clears throat> they should not be a risk with the franchise unit. So that's a concern, right? You, you've identified it, you've pointed out the section, and you've explained why it is a concern to you. So the next step is explaining to the franchisor that you understand why that clause, why that issue or uh, section of concern is in the franchise agreement. Basically, you're telling the franchisor, hey, I know it, why it's there, I know why it protects you, and you know th that lays the foundation for the next step, for the third step. But, um, but frankly, th that's the key, right, is, is telling the franchisor, look, I get it, the personal guarantee is there to protect you and make sure that I don't go rogue and I damage the system, and then I bail and no one's there left to clean it up or pay for that cleanup. Um, that's why the personal guarantee is there, right? Um, so things like, uh, what would be another one um, uh, that would be a concern, really? I mean, really anything. Oh, timelines, right? So I get it. There's a, there's a year timeline for me to build out and open the unit. Uh, I understand that's there to make sure that I'm, I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to as a franchisee, that we're on the ground, that we're taking steps to open and we're not trying to delay or trying to cause, um, you know, any, any problems or just sitting on our hands about it. So it's, it's there to help the system. It's there to, to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to as a franchisee, but it's a concern. What happens if I get in the middle of the build out and my general contractor leaves? That is very typical. Um, we've dealt with quite a few of those. That's probably a good video topic from the future. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's not fun to deal with that. But if that happens, you as a franchisee, if you have a one year timeline and you're down to the wire and your general contractor is gone, what do you do, right? You are potentially at risk of losing the franchise agreement and being terminated, um, depending on what the franchise agreement says. So that's a concern. That is why you know why it's there to protect the franchisor. You've explained why it is a concern to you. The last step is to propose to the franchisor what uh, or a reasonable um, modification, a reasonable proposal that would a address your concerns, right, that would alleviate and mitigate your risk and alleviate your concerns that you've identified in the first step. Um, so our example was a personal guarantee, right? Um, so we'll, we'll first, 
The personal guarantee concerns you because A, you have other businesses out there, right? Now the second step, or, or this, uh, in the third step, there's two parts, right? The first part is to give them a proposal that's reasonable for you and is also reasonable for the franchisor. So in our example of the um, personal guarantee, maybe that looks like carve outs, right? Maybe that's carving out these other businesses or specific assets from you as a franchisee that would not be a risk of the personal guarantee. So everything else is, but these items are carved out and they're not subject to the personal guarantee. Um, sometimes there's time limits or monetary limits in that. Like uh, for example, hey, we're liable personally up to a certain amount and, there, and after that we're not, um, unless maybe there's certain specific issues where you've really caused major damage or something. Uh, and then timeline is saying that we're, we are promising to personally guarantee the, the, um, the business up until three or four years down the road. And once we get our feet under us, then the business can stand on its own and you don't need our personal guarantee, right? That's sometimes a way to address it. So that, that's a reasonable proposal that addresses your concerns, right? It mitigates your risk. It lowers that threshold for the personal guarantee. You're not going to eliminate it completely. I'll tell you that right now. But you can find a way to mitigate your risk and address the biggest concerns you have in that section or that item. That's a great step. Next part is to explain to the franchisor that your proposal addresses their concerns and still protects them. So for example, that the personal guarantee, if it's a carve out, it protects your business, but to the franchisor, you're telling them basically, hey, will you still have a personal guarantee on us? My bank accounts are at risk, right? The, anything related to the business is at risk that we will promise to compensate you for. But these unrelated assets, these unrelated businesses, they are not at risk because it has nothing to do with the franchise, right? It, it's not something that we're able to, to risk at this point with a personal guarantee. Um, but you still have recourse as a franchisor to come after us, right? Come after me as a franchisee. So that is the three-step process that I counsel clients on. I use it. Um, and, and really, I found success with it. My clients have found success with it. I think because psychologically, you are leading the franchisor to water, basically, right? You're saying, look, we have this, we have a baseline foundation. We agree. These are my concerns. These are your concerns. And I think we can address those concerns with this bridge, right? With this reasonable proposal that protects you, protects me, and makes us all happy. And we can still continue on the road together um, to success, right? So yeah, yeah, it's as simple as that. I mean, that's what I counsel clients on. Like I said, there, there's some nuances to it and there's some real, um, you know, depending on special circumstances, we can, you can take it a, a different way here or there. But that is what I tell clients. That's how I counsel them. And what we do in our FTD and franchise reviews is that we will identify those concerns and we'll coach them. We'll walk through these specific questions and answers and the three-step process for their concerns, right? So if it's a personal guarantee, we'll go through that analysis based on that specific franchise agreement and based on their specific concerns, and we'll come up with reasonable proposal. Um, or if it's, you know, I don't know, confidentiality or a timeline issue, we'll do the same. Sometimes the requests are not so um, complicated. Sometimes we don't need the full three-step process. And I tell them, look, this is probably not a controversial request, um, but, you know, we can make it and, and we'll see where, the, where it goes from there. If they, kick, if they push back or kick it back, then we can, we can uh, counter again, right? And come back with the three steps. So that's it. Um, keep an eye out for maybe, a, you know, some mini course or some other resources on, on how to do this uh, a little more um, specifically and uh, a little more detail. Maybe I'll do like a sample, I guess. I don't know, a real life example, um, like in a mini course or something. But anyways, keep an eye out for that. If we can help you with your franchise reviews or franchise uh, FDD reviews, let us know. Reach out, rewrite them, reread them. We deal with them every day. So we'd love to, uh, to help counsel you through that and help you understand your obligations and, and such. So have a good one. We'll chat next time.